my name is Umang Nahata. Uh, I am not an AI machine learning expert and I think judging from the whole talk today and the, the reason you guys are gathered today, first give a good round of applause to yourselves. I don't know about you, but at least coming on a Saturday, of course my wife was like, you know, gave me that look, which I don't know if any AI, we need an AI or machine learning to predict, but you know that look. And big thanks to Nasser, Sam. Because for doing this, because if I get five people in my house, I'm like going crazy. Okay, what do I need? What do I need? This, that, this, that. And here he is sitting comfortably on his last bench while you guys are having fun, learning, and taking care of 50 plus audience. So, big cheers to him for doing this. Thanks, Sam. All right, so this is the topic where I'm going to talk about how I got started in AI machine learning and how you can too. So it's a pretty good, interesting topics today that I saw. We saw Bert talk about the chatbots. We talk, uh, saw Matt talk about the sentiment analysis. Sam talking about the Louis. So they are more like aligned toward the cognitive services where you're basically talking about natural language. Uh, what I will talk about is more is building your own AI machine learning models using Azure Machine Learning Studio. I think I'm dangerous enough to build something, but yes, there's a whole separate conversation when it needs to go into production or get the right people involved. So we'll leave it that there. Uh, there are things we will talk about and things that I can't talk about. So sorry for that, but I'm a fast talker, so feel free to slow me down or raise your hands or something if you have any questions. So we'll quickly go through about me, um, do some bit of an AI machine learning introduction. I have some pretty pictures that I took from the world famous reference site called Wikipedia. That will work for all of us. Uh, I want to spend the big chunk of my time talking about machine learning studio and there we want to spend as much time as building a quick and dirty model. Basically we'll take census data and then we'll say out of that let's pick four or five things that we want to and then we'll think of ourselves as a bank or a venture capitalist where hey do we want to fund Sam's next initiative. You're going to pick on Sam that's way. That's what I've thought today. So he's going to be my example case for every example that we run through. So if, do we want to extend Sam alone or not? And stuff like that. So that's the time where I want to spend for the play and run and then finally we'll do the closing. I didn't see, there were TV TVs in front of me so I learned something too. So here's about me, uh, that's a, the last known good picture about me with a very cool hairstyle before it was common here. Um, uh, I've, we are all in Cleveland, so I'm repurposing this talk that I gave at other conferences. So this is, we are all in Cleveland, and this is me doing something crazy, uh, code jamish with under my car. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, you can find me, there's only, there's many Umang Nahata now, with Progressive, but you can find one of me. I, I read, uh, think, and I'm highly curious. Uh, I'm jack of all kind of guy, I'm a dev and a tester, so that explains my generalist and the varied experience skill. Uh, I would like to share and I believe sharing is caring but there are things that I can't talk and you know what if you ask a really intelligent question I will probably put in that segment I can't talk you know just to sound cool but I'll try my best to give you some answers or something that you can come up with yourself um, and I think there is nobody in the audience is a data scientist right just want to make sure where am I like you know lay of the land okay cool I can make everything up now. So that's just about me, and yes, that is the last part where I wanted to make sure now I'm good, no machine learning guys, data scientists guys, because those guys are sneaky. So what is AI? Uh, it's nothing a new kid on the block, it's been around 1960s, it's just been recently enabled by, the, by all this tech advancement. So one thing that I usually look at any technology is the, the factors contributing to it. So think about all the advancement in cloud, storage, compute. IoT, the sensors, the thing. So when that happens, what happens is you have a thing that was there all the way back, but now suddenly it's getting enabled because all of those constraints have been minimized or eliminated and we are getting better at it. So as Sam pointed about the oil example, there was a good stuff there too, but nobody had the means or the resources to capitalize on this. Same thing is happening on the data front. So it's been there for a while and then if you look at the chart on the right side that says, what is AI? Think about AI as a big goal. We are just hit, trying to hit the big goal. It's a lofty goal that has a lot of things that can help towards this. 
machine learning is just one small component towards achieving that goal. Sam talked about Lewis, uh, Bert talked about chatbots, uh, Matt talked about using the sentiment analysis of users' language. That's language, vision, and other pieces that are part of some other pieces here, like if you want to call it some other things. There will be somewhere here that are enabling the artificial intelligence goal. And deep learning, when people say these terms are so synonymous, sometimes I even like have to like, okay, look up myself in Google. I'm like, okay, sorry, Bing. It's a Microsoft thing, so I'll try to put reference to Bing. I have to look up uh, Google, never mind, get, can't get the Bing in one. So I have to look up the Google to say, okay, what they're trying to talk about. And for me, the things, one of the things that I try to do is to make it simple for me to understand. Otherwise, how can you explain it to somebody when you don't even know what the, what it means? So deep learning is just another subset of machine learning, but it's, the terms are synonymous. If people say AI, ML, DL. So basically, th but the bottom line is think of machine, uh, artificial intelligence as the holy goal. Machine learning is a way to approach that goal, and a deep learning is a subset of machine learning. And then you have those other things like those chatbots, natural language, the vision, they're all somewhere in those circles. But at the broad level, the big picture, the 50,000 view, big AI, what we are trying to do is to mimic human behaviors. Uh, that's what we are trying to do. We, our, our sense of AI is driven by our knowledge of sense, learn, respond, and touch. So you get a robot, you build it with artificial intelligence. So you want that robot to sense, hey, this is a piano. And hey, I know the learning modules for piano, so I need to do the right balance to hit the keys. I don't want to just hit, I don't want Arnold or Terminator on this kind of piano. If you are not trying to do that and respond, like, can I play a nice piece? Or can I do something more? Can I, can I sense a different, another human being besides me? And can I play that? I don't know what's the right term, but in sync with him. So that's what we are trying. So AI is just another way we are looking at it from a human perspective. Uh, why you should care? Uh, I just mentioned earlier, like one of my trends is when I'm seeing a technology, I'm also trying to see the ancillary or the support things. If too many things are happening that are supporting that thing, it's causing what I call a flywheel effect. It's, it's there, actually, it's an industry term. I don't call it. It's a flywheel effect. There's a, some good books on that. But the idea is like you're seeing trends in storage, in development, in compute, in cloud, in IoT. All of these things are creating the capacity to create and generate data, save, store, process data. And now with the tools happening, you're beyond a critical mass that it's going to come at you, whether you like it or not. Things will start getting like you will start picking up the low hanging fruits of AI and then you'll start moving to some hard reaching fruits for AI and then maybe something else, maybe somebody from here will find something then you'll be lucky to say, hey, you're part of that group and he was attending this conference or session. It's also getting into hardware. Another interesting development that I see is they're getting into chips and that happens that means like, okay, companies are investing a significant amount of capital and money to build things like they're making a call for a reason. They're not like, okay, yeah, let's throw five million or five billion on building chips and all of that. No, there has to be some good reason. Uh, third thing that I learned in the code, code MASH conference earlier this year uh, in January was somebody mentioned they are now thinking about a new interoperability format called ONNX. Uh, it stands for Open Neural Network Exchange. What it is, it's a new standard where you can develop your deep learning models in one framework you can export it and run it on other things. You can even run it on your Raspberry Pis. So that blew my mind away. If that's going to happen, think about the old days where you had a Microsoft Word doc and it doesn't work anywhere else unless you have a Microsoft Word doc. Now you have OpenOffice, you have other tools that can open that file and you can work it out. So if this takes off, that's also a good thing. You can develop maybe in some day in the future, you can develop a file or a machine learning module, train it, and move it to your your infrastructure or a different vendor. So that's something I'm uh, curious. And finally, as a, it's as a funny, like Sam mentioned the same thing in the first thing, the data, the new algorithm. I usually call data the new gold or oil. But now you're treating your data as an important resource because that can help you build your own algorithm. So with that, let's do a quick tour of the different machine learning types. Oh, that's actually a duplicate. Mach ML stands for machine learning, ML learning type. So there's two learnings. So there are three categories of machine learning. Uh, supervised machine learning, 
So basically a good example is where you have a bunch of data and you label them like Zillow. You have five bedrooms, two baths, this much square foot, this is the dollar amount in this zip code. Now you have, an, you have a bunch of those data. So when you go to Zillow.com and you say, oh, five bedroom, two bath, uh, the one house is five million and the second house is two million. Now you know, oh, it's a steal and everybody's rushing it. It's, it's, it's a common sense for us unless then you try to find out what is happening with that house. But it's a label data set so you can predict the prices. If you're in Manhattan, the prices are in certain range. If you're in some other part of the country, the prices are in certain range. But it's all label data. So you can quickly use the algorithm and say, okay, find me a better house with this to this range. And then you can jump on a deal. It's, it's simple. The other part is unsupervised machine learning where you are trying to find patterns. So a good example is Netflix. How many of you have Netflix? All right. Yes, we have honesty in the room. We watch. How many have got binge watching on movies or series? What's happening? You like this? You might like that. They are just making up, using the patterns of what you're watching and liking to predict the next movie that you might like. And that has made me spend countless hours on watching this stuff after that. But that's a good way. Uh, another example that I would like to do here with an audience, uh, anybody brave enough? You don't have to come to me, I'll come to you. All right, I guess. So, I have kids at house. I have one kid. He messes up things, like, you know, mixes different cards. Can you, can you sort this out for me? Take a look. What can, can you know? Like you have different toys mixed up. Can you? Can you? Yeah. Can you? Can you organize them back? See what is he doing? He is looking the back cover. Can you turn it around and now sort it out? Not looking at the back. Yeah. Now try that different pattern. So he's looking at all the colors, the patterns, the shape, and then trying to see out. Okay, which one belongs to which stack? So I'm basically what I've done is I've combined four different cards. One from Scrabble Flash. And let's see, hey, you don't need to mix it up, but that's okay. Good job. Good, a big hand for him. So initially he was looking at this, the other face down cover, and he was being very quick to sort that. And I'm like, was trying to say, okay, you know what? Let me take that away from you. So he was sorting the cards based on this. Like, hey, this is face time. This is Uno. This is, this is some kind of card with two letters in front of back. So definitely not these two. So he was using the patterns, but he was doing an unsupervised human learning, if you want to call it, which is what we do really good. Now we are trying to read machine. But then, when I said, when I said, don't use the other back, now he started to get a little, but yeah, you did good. So I just threw a curveball at you. But you did basically what you call an unsupervised machine learning. You found the pattern, and then you started sorting the cards based on that. Easy for us. Tough for machines. And then the last type of machine learning is reinforcement. That to me is a holy grail. I still, I've seen a lot of companies work on that, but the idea is when you are, you do a trial and error when you are given a goal. So if the, the, the learning algorithm becomes that smart that you say, okay, find me this, do this, and then it does all of the legwork, that is something I would be curious to see. If somebody has more information, feel free to share. So that would be, in my opinion, would be like we'll be getting to a different phase if we can get there. So for the purposes of today, we are going to stick to a supervised machine learning. So you remember like Zillow, I will have a bunch of data and then I will pick out the data that I want to pick for building my machine learning algorithm and building my model and then we'll build a model and then as Sam pointed out, we will do a publish. So within the next 20 minutes, we will do our first machine learning, building an algorithm, making an API. And then later on when you go home or Monday mornings, you can tell your managers, hey, I have a solution to sell you. And then you can even, if you have better, if you are paying customers, and then you can tell them how tough it is to do all of this stuff. That was totally sarcasm, so you should understand that. But the outline that is a very simpli simplified outline for the purposes of this demo is you have your data, you do some kind of pre-processing, maybe you don't want all the columns in your data, you want to clean your data, you want to take out things that have bad rows, so you don't want to do your machine learning to learn from those data. And then you split your data. Uh, a good rule of thumb that I've heard is 80-20. No, it's not a Pareto's principle for somebody who's aware, but I like it. It's, it's Pareto's principle. If you remember that term, you can still apply that 80-20 rule here. So you take the 80% of the data to train your model. And once you take the 80% of the data to train your model, what happens is you are taking that input and then you're training the model 
And here is where you plug and play the Microsoft Democrat demo. Never mind, I'm going to butcher that term. The Microsoft uh, algorithms, where Microsoft is trying to democratize, the, got it, and try to make it easy so you can build and train a model. And once you train a model, you are saying, okay, here, you learn all of that data. Now you're ready for quiz time. Here, now I'm going to send you the remaining 20% of the data that I pulled. And I want to see how well you're doing. Once you have done all of that, let me score you. You need to score it. Like, hey, is it that bad or is it that good? And there's, there's debates. I will not get into that front. Once you did the scoring of the model, then you want to do is maybe you want to use an optional thing called evaluate model where you can have another similar structure using some other algorithm come into this for comparison. Hey, is model A better than model B? Uh, this we'll see if we have time, but we can definitely try to build something up for this. How is everybody? Still okay? I know it's after lunch, so it's it's a tough spot to be. Bert mentioned a very interesting thing that I wanted to highlight. He said about overfitting, underfitting, and appropriate fitting. So I thought that's also a good, like, I'm giving you a crash course on machine learning with the high-level terms and some of the terms that you might need to be aware of. But the best way to think about overfitting, underfitting, and appropriate fitting is you have a bunch of data. Uh, think about a two-dimensional data. You're giving it and plotting it across, and some are circles. Now you're trying to tell the machine is, here, take this all piece of data, and once you have built in, try to find a formula or an algorithm, a line, that tries to separate those two pieces of data. So when you are underfitting, the algorithm is, I don't even care, worry. I don't care. I'll just draw a line in the middle of the data, and anything to the left is this, anything to the right is that. That's too simple to explain the variance. That is not machine learning. It's like, you might as well flip a coin and just do that answer if you want AI terminology or sell it to any customers. Appropriate fitting is the balance that you're trying to solve, where you're saying, hey, this is a bunch of data, a bunch of X and a bunch of circles. Hey, machine, can you use all this data to find out a formula or a graph that can separate, separate two pieces of data? And that line could be denoted by a formula that the machine has learned itself. And there could be a cases, because you want to be 100% accurate every single time, where you will have a bunch of X's that you think is in a circle zone. But that's fine. A good rule of thumb is if your model is 100% accurate, it's too good to be true. Humans, we make mistakes, so don't expect machines to not make mistakes. We are not there yet. And then there is that too good to be true. That is what I call overfitting, or sometimes people call it force fitting. Basically, you say, you know what, let me train it so exclusively that if you give me this thing, it will this, and then you know what, I'll draw a line around those axes. And I'm like, oh, these are there, these are there. It's like, don't go there. It's... It's too good to be true. So when you see or heard the frame, phrase, too good to be true, you might want to lean back and say, oh, some mistakes are fine with the machine learning model. Uh, this is another thing that I want you guys to take out. Uh, you don't need to memorize it. This is thing is called Azure Machine Learning, Microsoft Azure Machine Learning Algorithm Cheat Sheet. So remember I told you about the, the whole outline, machine learning outline, and I said you plug and play the algorithms. So this is what it is all about. I've written this on the board here, so that way, when I'm doing the demo, you guys can help me cheat, so that I can quickly move on to this. So then I don't have to remember all of this in my head. So basically, what the way you do is, you start from your center point, and then you say, okay, based on the data that I have. So another thing that I learned today is this was an old PDF. Uh, it's still out there on the internet. Microsoft has upgraded a new one. So I can show you the new one. Bless you. Uh, this has 25 algorithms, and now there's a bunch of other stuff there. So I was trying to find if they are there. I couldn't find it yet. I'll have to do uh, more of my homework now. Microsoft, they just keep updating new documentation. Uh, like, remember, classic math problem. So we, you start from there, and then you say, what you're trying to do? Are you trying to discover structure? So remember those three types of machine learning, unsupervised, supervised, and reinforcement. In this example, you have 25 algorithms. 24 of them are for supervised learning. Only one, which is clustering, is unsupervised machine learning. Just wanted to give you a heads up of what this is. Then you take that and then you start doing what you want to do. Are you trying to predict categories? Are you trying to predict categories that are more than two types or three types? So uh, example would be, let me see if I can get this out. Nope, that doesn't work. All right, we'll do that later. 
So that's another cheat sheet if you want to keep from this presentation. So now with that, let's jump start into Azure Machine Learning Studio. So what you need uh, a Azure subscription, and remember Sam pointed out in the morning that you can build a get a free subscription. So that should be good enough for most of us. Uh, my demo is also on my free subscription because I don't want to show you my workplace subscription and whatnot. Then you can quickly set up your machine learning workspace. It's a UI thing, so it's like even though I'm a developer tester, I like less code. And I quickly can build a model and then you can show how it is. So this is the site where you can start your journey on Azure Machine Learning Studio, studio.azureml.net. And then this is a, another resource that you can take a peek for if you want to get started on machine learning. Questions? All right, so let's get jump in. So we'll build um, an income predictor. We'll take a, a sample data file that Microsoft has from the census data, and from there we will we are we are going to think ourselves like a bank or a venture capitalist or a dating application, whatever you your preference is, and you want to maybe predict given a bunch of inputs whether that person is either going to make a certain amount less than that amount or more than that amount because if you're in the bank you want to you want to make sure if you're whatever you're loaning out the money can come back to you you don't want to make a bad loan uh, if you are a venture capitalist something similar and then what we'll do is once we build our model it's good but the what is the way you want to digitalize and you get the capitalize on that experience is you want to make an api out of that so that you can give it to your customers or your organization where you work for and then you can use that in your application but I think the audience is pretty good like the whole talks today have been about the Lewis API's Bert mentioned about the API that he was using that they can call so kind of basically API's are pretty much the common denominator for pretty much any app that you're developing these days you do can't develop everything but you can always use others apps and build on that so we want to build our app machine learning experiment and we want to build an API out of that so others can consume or maybe I can sell it to that gentleman for 1000 bucks a month and I will I'll be having my fun out of it and then we will run some dummy use cases I will probably use Sam's name for one of them and maybe Bert for another one uh, let's let's have fun with speakers and then we'll see if they make less than 50 grand or more than 50 grand because this data that I have is from a census which is old so that they had only less than 50 or more than 50 so I don't have the right data and this is the what I get for using a sample data all right so with that let's get started everybody good so this is the site studio.azuremachinelearning.net you can always google that Azure Machine Learning Studio and then you get to this screen then you can click sign in and I might have to probably pick up your account so I'll pick up my free account easy login and then you'll see a browser based interface where you basically do drag and drop with this kind of structure for our demo purposes and then at the end you can build your experiment so you on the left hand side you can see a bunch of different components like different menu items so projects experiment web services notebooks data sets screen models settings uh, we'll not go in each one of them but we'll just know enough so that you guys can be dangerous after you are done with this stuff and then so here is the listing of all the experiments that you have and then you can see it can give you a quick snippet of what it looks like so what you can do is you can go back to the experiments tab click on the new button you guys see at the back little big let me see so these are the left hand menu and then you see this this one is your all the different files and then this new button at the back so I click on new it brings up uh, do you want a blank experiment similar similar like word excel PowerPoint what do you want a new file so I say okay I want a blank experiment uh, a good tool tip would be they have a bunch of samples in their uh, gallery 
So feel free to take a look at them. When you import them, you get not only the data, but all their whole models. So once you get more dangerous, feel free to look at these. Uh, there's a ton of things, so cross-validation for regression, things that are sound so cool, uh, machine learning for letter classification, I'll leave it to you. So, but for now, let's build a simple app that can predict income. So, the moment I create, create, clicked blank, it says experiment created on this. I can maybe do is call it a by a name, global AI bootcamp demo. And then, you see that outline, something similar to what I just drew, um, drew it on the whiteboard here. And then on the left side is you have a bunch of uh, items that you can plug and play. So you'll see how much coding I do, you know, how much heavy lifting I do at my workplace when I'm doing this occasionally. So, uh, so you have different pieces of information in the different categories. Uh, as you learn and play with this more, you will get more comfortable. So I'm not expect, expecting anybody to be comfortable. By the way, Akshu and anybody has seen this or played with this? Okay, good. I... All right, but keep me, uh, keep me honest, right, if I'm saying something. So what we'll do is we'll do our sample data set. So you see I have a data set. It can be saved or sampled. So I have not, since it's my demo account, I don't have any uploaded any data set. So it doesn't show up. So I'm going to use the adult census income data sets, drag and drop, that's it. Right click, I can see data set and I can quickly do, you know what, like any data guy, I want to see my data, what it is. And then I see, okay, it has 32,561 rows, 15 columns, and then this is a snippet of some of the data. So age, and then you can see there's a histogram of different ages, uh, working class, What's the unique values, different unique values, missing values. That gives you some indication of your data where you want to do some cleanup or some things. F and L weight, I have no idea what this is. Education, 16 unique values, all the way from. So you get the idea. You are watching your data. And let's say we want to use this data to build a machine learning model that can eventually predict on income. And right now my income is very simple. Hey, either you make less than 50 grand or you make more than 50 grand. I'm just doing a two level split. Either you're here or you're not here. So everybody good? This is my data. And what happens with the data? Do you want to take every piece of data to build a machine learning model? Uh, no, yes, depends. I will put it in depends because what is your way of building the model? So let's say in my case, I want to build a machine learning that predicts either you make more than 50 or less than 50. So let's start picking up things that you think are relevant for making such model. Do you think age is important as an income predictor? Yes, okay, so I'm going to take audience account age. What else do you think is important in this data? I have no idea what is work class. Uh, it looks like private state. I'm like, uh, you know what, for the first iteration, let's skip that. Uh, this. I have no clue. Education, is that important for you? Nice. Yeah, you have to remember I'm trying to engage you so that you don't sleep. Education number, it's similar to that, but I don't need to same field because just the one in a string or this. And let's keep it simple. We don't want to. Marital status. Yep, okay. I have mixed reviews. Some people say it should not be a predictor. Some people say it's a predictor. You know what? Uh, I'll just make that maybe with a, a red one. So I'll see if I want to have it or not. If I'm lazy at that point or I'm running out of time. How about that? Occupation. Do you want that now? Yes. Okay. You guys are a tough one. Because I never have that in my original one. So I'll take a desk with the red. But I, I like where you guys are going. You're starting to think about, okay, what should I need? The data and what data is important to me to make a prediction or the machine. Relationship. No, thank goodness. I have no clue why this is there. Maybe they got it in the census data. Ah, now this is going to be an interesting one. Race. All right, it's a, it's a friendly uh, forum. You can say what you want, but the fun fact is this actually tells us something more about the data because this is what I call a data bias. 
because if you are training a machine on a data and giving it a factor that can build out a machine learning model with the data bias so race and gender should be not part of it but you see the world is not what I defined right now so now this is where you have to be careful as you guys build models you have to understand the implication of what you're building or having those ethic conversation or deep conversation of the models that you're building because this is a very tricky area you have to be careful do you want your model to be taking that factor into account I'll leave it to you I have no answer right now but I can add it or not depends on that so if you want we can add it or we want you know what this is very dangerous territory we'll use that third color marker yes so what you're doing is we have a bunch of data a lot of columns those 15 columns and I don't want all of the columns for the machine learning model to take into account so now I'm separating the columns that I think are relevant to my machine learning model so what you're doing is a bias it's a bias so I call this as a data bias basically now what you're doing is income is should not be a factor of your race or gender but now what you're doing is when you build that model then you are adding bias to your machine learning model uh, they, there's some interesting news article that I read like they were trying to predict if somebody was gonna so basically people who are out of some like say the institutions and now they're making a prediction but then if you're using some of those factor like race it leans more heavily is send them back so now what is happening is given you have the same input with the different race for one it's predicting give them opportunities for one it's saying no don't give them what is that happening so you have to be very careful as you build this model that's another thing that I want you guys to think data bias or how how you are using your data to build system that are gonna make a prediction do you want this loan application to reject somebody's loan just because he's of a certain race or gender exactly so think about the consequence this is a dangerous stuff it is it's powerful but it's very dangerous so race and gender I put on there uh, capital gain capital loss uh, I don't even know what it, hours per week is something that I find interesting how much you make depends on how much hours you work so you know what I can live with that I would definitely like hours per week to be a good input factor for my model that I'm building or at the data all of that data that I'm giving so that I say hey machine learning take it build your algorithm build your curve along those X's and O's and try to see if you did a better job than what I did native country uh, you know what I don't care income yes I do care because this is what we want to predict on so I want that data for the machine learning to learn so income definitely so this is what I'm gonna predict on okay so enough fun now we'll take a step into high gear so remember this cheat sheet we import our data we pre-process it I'm not doing the data cleaning aspect of this but what I'm gonna do is selecting only the columns that I want the ones that we have identified here and then we can pick and choose what we want sounds good so the next step is you can have to select some columns from the data set uh, this is my experience is like sometimes it's so you're so busy and then you're trying to figure out okay it's something related to data now you're trying to hunt and peck what you want to do and it's sometimes tough for me as well so what I do is usually I go here and I say what I'm trying to do I want to select something and then it comes up with all the words that has some select and then I'm like oh yeah this is what I need I take this drag and drop now I take this and I connect it to this it's like the low code no code UI models that are, that are kind of getting up a big push these days so I just connected the lines if it turns green you are there so now it turns red here uh, value required so now I, uh, I click here and I say on this side launch column selector on the right side to pick the columns that I care so out of those 15 columns we might have a few of them so all good so now we're gonna take age we're gonna take education yeah I wish it had double click it takes it all the way to that side it doesn't work that way for some reason uh, 
uh, marital status occupation you know what let's ignore them for now and let's take those two controversial fields um, hours per week and of course income because that's what we want to predict so we are going to have six columns selected five of them is what will tell the machine to learn from all the data and the sixth is what you I want you to predict and I say okay uh, best part is you can do a right click and you can visualize but right now since I have not run I can't see it. so you can go on the run model at the bottom and say run so either you can select the model out of like n blocks and say run selected or you can say run that runs everything so now you see it went green check here right click data set visualize now you're visualizing so you only are down to six columns out of those 15 columns the rows are the same but you see this is your data set looking like age 39 bachelors white male 40 income on that data point was less than 50k you get the idea so now my what's my next third step on the processing uh, I want to split the data 80 20 I want to 80 percent of the data to train the model so now I can go and I say I want to split it so rather than hunting and peeking in the different drop downs which Microsoft again explodes in the expand view for me which I don't like I started to do you know what I want to do something like split data and then I say oh split data it's under data transformation sample and split no way I could go all through all of them and I take this you see how easy it is it turns green you can't connect it to something else boom how much tough work you do as a developer or all of that B busy lives we have and now it says split data 0.5 uh, the way it is interpreted is 80 20 right so you have to probably do say for the first fraction you have to do a 0.8 so basically what it's saying is when you do this 0.8 that is 80 percent of the data will come out from this one and the 20 percent data set will come out of this one so you can run this to visualize the data set uh, but let's do more what's the next step somebody can help me with this I know uh, people at the back can't see it I apologize that and it's in a red color so even it's so train so now we want to use this data set to train so let's do a train and where is the train 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 model under the train category under the machine learning piece take a train I mean not that literally trained <laughs> take this endpoint you see which one is turned green red or green green let's see now this is the part where you use that cheat sheet Microsoft Azure machine learning cheat sheet so I'll open that up for you so there's another additional reference you can find it on the Microsoft site this is the old version this is a new version they have it looks more it has more boxes and more things but so now what are you trying to do you're trying to predict values right a category either he makes less than 50k or more than 50k okay I'm predicting categories is it three values or more values or it's two values two okay so let's go I'm doing a two values so that is called a two class classification you have to google a lot more if you want to get into the weeds for each of those algorithm uh, I do the same if I want to get more understanding and then these are the different algorithms Microsoft has provided two classes here and this 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 you get the idea and then it has some few keywords like accuracy fast training and you want know what let's take something that is quick and easy I want accuracy and fast training so let's take two class decision for us so that's our algorithm that I'm gonna take for building this initial model so I say two class two class decision for us under classification I throw it here take this connect it to the green arrow now I want to train the model what does the model has to predict on which columns are we predicting on income so I, it's going in the red squiggly line red icon mark it says value required because it says okay hey buddy you're giving me all this data what is what I'm trying to predict on and I'm saying you know what you're predicting on income and now when I take this model what's the next step after the train I want to score the model so once you have built a model that is now learned all of that from the 80 percent of the data now you want to say here once you have learned now let me get the other 20 percent that have withhold and see how well you are doing with that data are you predicting what the real data was 
if the data said you make less than 50k are you predicting it's making less than 50k how good are you so with that we'll get score in place score score model take that so tough work ah you get the idea and now remembering 20 percent of the data i'm putting in the score model so what you have learned let's see how good you are once you have done the score model the last step is optional is evaluate so let's just throw it there oh it's here already so i'll probably This is this is our initial model. Now we have all built our first machine learning model, custom machine learning model based on the data. So now let's run it all the way top to down. So we are getting the data. We have selected few columns that we say is worthwhile for building our income predictor. And out of that, we are saying, let's take 80% of that data to train and build a model. Once you think you're good enough, let me throw you with the other 20% of the data that's hold on to see how well you predict pick what's the real values and then let's do a bunch of scoring and evaluation so that that way you can talk to the data scientists or the folks in your company or your teams and say if this is a model we should pursue so you see this is all running the circular thing and it's kind of tracking working so you can even see right click you can see there are two data set so the second data set you can do a visualize so that's the best part it's so like GUI interface that it's good for like a non-developer too. So you see, we had 32,000 rows. The 20% of that is only 6,500. So this is the data set that we hold it out. And that's part of the second data set. This is your train model. Right click. And then you can visualize everything out of that. Score model. Right click. Visualize. And this could be heavy. So this is the real value. After that, 6,512 values. This is what the machine learning predicted after it predicted. And the probabilities. Uh, we are not going to go in that, but you get the idea. We had talked about the probabilities, how comfortable or how good it is. And that's a function of how do you build the model. Right now, with the quick and dirty model I built, I have not optimized it. So I'm taking this at a face value. So this one is. So you see, fun thing. Uh, let's find a row which is different. All right, this one. So when you are, this guy was a 36 year old, white. Oh yeah, sorry, my bad. So this uh, row, um, let me put that up. 36 white male. The real data value was he was making less than 50 grand. The machine thinks he's making 50 more than 50 grand. It's okay. It's a, it's okay to be wrong. You are trying to use the data to let it find a curve in the whole set of that data land. So that being said, you can then do a right click on the model and then you can visualize your model's effectiveness. So let me put that. So this model is actually pretty good. So what happens is the way a uh, very rough rule of thumb, please don't quote me on that. Anyway, so if this is on the diagonal axis, that means it's random. You might better as well have a coin flip, heads or tails, and make a prediction. If it's on the other side, it is predicting but just the opposite. So if that's the case and it's really good at being doing the opposite, you can just do a Boolean on a two class and then boom, you have this one. So this one, it has a good prediction. It's getting good to a prediction. And if it goes all the way up, uh, remember that thing, too good to be true. Either both of the axis, this is where you should be thinking of. But this is more detailed construct. So what it's saying is, hey, I validated the model, um, uh, the accuracy. So there's a bunch of numbers. So this model is 78% accurate out of the box. It thinks based on the data, the 20% it evaluated the data. So I was like, okay, should I take it? Uh, all right, you know what? Let's ship it. Customer is happy. He's like, I have no way to tell. Now you have at least 78% to tell it. You know what? Let's ship it. And then. I'm like, okay, and then he says, okay, send me an API, uh, tell me how much I have to pay per month, and I'm like, okay, cool, and I will do all the heavy lifting for you. You know what, it takes a lot of time, grunt, effort, you don't know it, this is how I make money, right? So I'm going to say set up a web service. Once I'm good, it's all green, and take a look at what Microsoft is doing. It's just collapsing everything, 
and boom, now you have a separate tab at, uh, apart from the training experiment at the top. So that was our original model, now it says a predictive experiment. Now you are making an API of this. And now this is your web service input, uh, let me see if I can zoom it. And then at the bottom, you can say it says created, created, created experiment, it's done. Now what I can do is, since I know this by my experience, what I'm going to say is, you know what, I don't want to go in the select columns in data set. I want to quickly connect this to the scoring model. It's just my way, quickly, so that we can save a bunch of things I don't want to type. So now it's good. I Before I deploy it and push it, I want to make sure it's runnable. I hit run from the bottom. So the, all this menu at the bottom. To make sure it's all good before I deploy it. So you can make some optimization tweaks like, hey, you don't need to give me all those 15 columns. I just need those six columns. And out of that six, I also need only five. And being a demo, I just decided to do the big six. So once this goes green, and this is another pet peeve of mine, Microsoft doesn't stay collapsed on this side. It just keeps coming back and forth every now when I'm done. So you can see the experiment has finished running, all done. And now I can say on the bottom side, deploy web service. Let's deploy that as an API or publish it. And now we have a machine learning experiment that API, not an experiment anymore, it's an API that can predict your income. Either you're making more than 50 or making less than 50. And time it took, half an hour maybe. And we have a solution for our client. So now this is my API keys and all of that. Uh, you can make either call them from Postman or your client or your nice looking GUI. It's up to you. Uh, we'll do a quick test here just to have fun, right? So, all right, Sam, what's your age? Yes, sir. Microsoft gives it to you. So it gives you a testing mechanism so you can start playing with that too. And then there is, okay, I will probably, there, there is, if you click on the, um, there's a link on this thing, you can actually see all the documentation. So remind me, like if I have time, I'll show you that. So I hit the test tool, and let's say Sam's age is 45, Okay, yeah. all right, let's not throw in mistype all of this thing because Bert, we, I'm not there yet for you. Okay, masters, okay, this is controversial, so maybe Sam, just, what are the values I had? White, I'll just do white, so we, uh, and Sam maybe works 60 hours a week, uh, is it right? Let's leave income blank, let's say Sam, how much you make? Ah, you make more than 50K. And the machine thinks, okay, it's good. You are good. All right, good for you, Sam. Let me take your education and strip it down now. Uh, high school, still white, but you get the idea. You don't want the machine learning to based on those two data. Isn't that not good? And maybe Sam works now 40 hours a week. And this is where I want to predict. So you see, I didn't build it correctly because I'm saying throwing it an income where it's supposed to predict the income. So definitely something that you can do. Now it machine learning, you see at the bottom, I'll just do it for there. So I don't go there, but you see I said turned in high, 40, high school, white, male, um, 40 hours a week. And then the machine learning is predicting that this was the, uh, is predicting less than 50 grad. So... We can keep doing this. Somebody wants to try, but you want to try with you? No, nope. no, but it's like, I don't want my income disclosed. But that's it. Yes. Oh, okay. Some, I was hoping for that. What did I do for the first value? I, I have a, a 45. Okay, see. Yeah. I have selective hearing. That's what I think my wife tells me. Masters. But this is two class classification, so you might get lucky or not. You see the idea? If you're going for a value prediction, that's regret. So you have different algorithms. Now we do it. And 60. Wow. I think it will predict. Ooh. What happened? You saw the bias creeping into the machine learning model? So if it was male, 
He was making more than 50. Thank you for that. That's your data bias. Same person, just a gender difference. You have to be very observed and attentive to this fact. And if you're making big decisions or your organization, you can work, create havoc. All right, we have... Yes, so then you'll have to start thinking about other ways, like why is this zero? You have to question whatever you build, like you just don't take the word for it. So, but zero, so now what happened? Did we give it an invalid value? But I'm, I'm more worried, like he predicted less than 50. And then why zero? So what happened? Did it, did it, is it, is there a data bias? I call that term data bias for lack of a better word. Like I usually make my own terms to make it understand. But it's like garbage in, garbage out. Your machine is now learning from bad data and thinking about things because you said, think about it in this way. Uh, I said to that gentleman, if I can find that experiment, so maybe if I click on this, let's see if we can open that whole documentation stuff. Okay. So, so test data endpoint and then there's a Squagger API. So there's some information there, it comes up with all of that, so you can use that. And then you can say to your client how much work you do for documenting all of that. So this is a, like a couple of things that I did for this demo in my original model, where I had age 25, education masters, single male, I think 40 hours, the machine predicted less than 50K. Uh, it's okay, it makes sense, okay, less than masters in that time. Now I have a 35 year old with the doctor, that's very tough. Uh, 40 hours, machine definitely predicted more than 50K in my demo example. And another one was, I'm taking the age could be either 63 or 39 depending on your viewpoint. I know this guy to be a high school grad or maybe let's say some college because he dropped out of college. He is married. Uh, I don't know if he was married at 39, but let's take a point of view as married. He's a male and is very hard working definitely 80 hours per week. So at that point, you think, from your experience, definitely more than 50K. High chance. All right, if you don't agree, but like, hey, anybody who's working 80 hours a week, and at this age, 63, should be earning a good amount of money. And machine says, nope, you're not. And I'm like, okay, who are you? You are, this is a Bill Gates mugshot photo. So this guy, I just tried to took his his profile at that time. He didn't. He dropped out of college. He's definitely working more than 80 hours a week when he was doing a Microsoft. But the machine learning on his tool doesn't seem to believe and say nope. So remember that whole appropriate fitting. Your machine learning is trying to make a a graph. And here is Mr. Gates, like somewhere all the way out. He's an extreme extreme point. And that's fine, your machine will fail. You need to have other mechanism and controls in place. How do we account for that? Just don't take blindly. Machine says, less than 50K, let's not let him date our daughter, let's not give him a loan. Oh boy, bad choices. So there are some appendix and links. Uh, you can go for that when you have time. Uh, in closing, what you're trying to do, you have to be very careful. For me, being dangerous enough is good enough. Try to build a model, see if it's effective, and try to tell people. Uh, data is the new gold or new oil, as Sam mentioned in the morning. It's funny, it's like similar thoughts are converging. Garbage in, garbage out. You have to be careful of your biases, your outliers in testing. How will you test it? You just can't say, take it for say, hey, he's making less than 50K, let's go with it. How would you put your checks and balances in such a system? I don't know the answer, uh, but I'm bringing it to you. Uh, machine learning is changing and evolving. I think the best bet would be to stay curious and keep up with it. And I think I don't need to preach it to this guy, this folks, sorry, who are here on a Saturday. And how will you use this for? Will you just experiment, play, or you take a bunch of your data from your company and try to see? Let's see what we can come up with. And if you find something and you can talk about it, feel free to talk about this. I would love to hear what you're doing it for. And there are other tools, like not Azure, it's a similar thing with Amazon and Google. So pick your poison of choice.
and in the end, machines are learning. Will you? So with that, uh, we'll open it for questions and answers. I think we have a few minutes left. Yes, sir. There are mechanisms that you can capture data and you can log them and you can even retrain your data, so. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry, I can't hear you much. Not in this model, but then as you learn from it, you have to have that conversation with your team. Is this actually a right thing to do? Yes, uh, I didn't show you that, but the last thing, remember the evaluate phase where I build one? So basically think about that is you can take this three pieces of information and redevelop it here. Basically, you are taking the same 80% to some other model that you are building. Let me see if I can show it to you in a quick second. I will do a lot of copy paste. Go to my experiments, uh, global AI bootcamp, training experiment, ah, Microsoft. Let's do uh, if I can spell train correctly. And let's pick up some other algorithm. Uh, we did two class decision for us. Let's say two class decision jungle. Sorry, I'm doing this with the very tiny fonts on here. Now I'm doing uh, scoring. Model. There we go. Ah, boy. So basically, I just created another algorithm and I have to train and it doesn't select my income field. Now, if I run it all, it's now having two different models with two different algorithms side by side. And then once you go to the evaluate model, you'll see those, now instead of one line, you'll see one line and then a separate line. And now you can then, you have to tweak the models and the algorithm. So there are a bunch of settings there. For the sake of one hour, half an hour demo, you're not going there and Googling every term and setting or talking to your data scientist and trying to learn. So we did that. Now you see that small check mark. It's running. Now this is running on the last front end. And that turn green, right click, visualize. You see one model is better than the other. So you see one do this kind of line in your data points and other do something similar, but it got better results. And then you can see one of them was 0.78. Where's the other one? Ah, you have to select. This one was 0.809. All right. So you guys can build. Sorry. So yeah, go be dangerous, but be careful. Thank you.